Hey guys, it's Renish for Fire and Steel. So one of the questions that we get asked most frequently is, uh, what is carbon steel? What does high carbon steel mean? What does stainless steel mean? And what does battle ready mean? I'm here to explain that to you. So welcome to my classroom. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is our stainless steel swords. So right here, I have a Geralt sword from The Witcher. This is how it looks in its sheath. Uh, we have this sword available in many different options. The Witcher swords are all available in different options. Uh, but this sword right here is in stainless steel. So our stainless steel swords are ideal for uh, display. I wouldn't recommend it for uh, sharpening to use to hit targets or anything like that. I would recommend just only using it for uh, display and cosplay. But let me show you how this stainless steel blade looks. Right here we have a stainless steel sword unsheathed. And uh, as you can see, I'm holding it by the blade and it's not really going to do much to me because most of our stainless steel swords will be blunted. That's one of the biggest reasons I don't really recommend using them for targets or anything like that. Um, it's just not ideal. Uh, you can get this sharpened if you want, but again, not something that I would recommend. Our stainless steel swords are very, very shiny compared to our carbon steel and high carbon steel swords. Our stainless steel swords will always look like this. Because it's blunted like this, I really do recommend it only for uh, decoration. And it is really pretty to use to decorate anyways because of how shiny and pretty it is. Even though these stainless steel swords are blunted, uh, I still would be very, very careful with them. Every sword that you see in this video, uh, no matter how sharp it is, no matter how not sharp it is, uh, make sure you use carefully because this sword, even though it is uh, blunted, it is still pretty heavy and the point is uh, still pretty pointy. So something I'd still really be careful with. But yeah, these are our stainless steel swords. Right here I have Tanjiro's Black Nitrian Blade. Carbon steel is just a type of steel that we use for these swords. Uh, they're 1035, meaning that they have a carbon content of 0.35%. So 1035, that gives you an indication of how much carbon content is in our swords. Uh, because the carbon content is lower than our battle ready swords, I wouldn't recommend these really for uh, hitting on hard targets or anything like that. Uh, I recommend them mostly, again, for display and for cosplay purposes only. You can sharpen them and uh, they can get sharpened and they can uh, stand a few blows. Uh, but I just think the battle ready is uh, what you're going to need to get if you want to do that. Uh, but let me show you how our carbon steel sword looks. This sword is so pretty. <laughs> this is uh, what our carbon steel sword kind of looks like. Similar to the stainless steel sword, except for the fact that it is a little bit sharper. I wouldn't say that this is fully blunted. It's not as smooth. Uh, it is um, a little bit sar sharp. I would say it's like semi-sharp. And again, the point is still very sharp. The next sword I'm going to show you guys is our high carbon steel sword. So I have uh, Tanjiro's Black Nitrium Blade again, but this is our high carbon steel version. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Battle ready swords should ideally have a carbon content of at least 0.45%. And that's what we have here. This sword right over here is 1045, meaning it has a 0.45% carbon content. Because the carbon content is higher than our regular carbon steel blades, this one is going to retain the sharpness better and retain any blows that are going to hit the sword. This level of carbon content allows for the sword to take a beating as well as be really good for attacking. So if you are going to be using any of our battle ready swords on bamboo or fruits, you are like 100% ready to go. At first glance, uh, I know that the carbon steel sword and the high carbon steel sword, they look the exact same because they are the same sword, just different steel types. Uh, but the biggest way that you can tell the difference between a battle ready sword and a non-battle ready sword is the Makugi pegs that are right over here. All of our battle ready swords will have Makugi pegs and those pegs uh, keep the sword in place and keep uh, it stronger. So when you're taking care of your high carbon steel sword or your battle ready sword, there are a lot of different steps because you want to make sure that uh, the sharpness is still there and you want to make sure it's not rusting and the blade's still strong. We have a sword care kit that comes with a bunch of different things Things that can help you take care of your swords and one of the things is to take out the mukugi peg so you can fully take the blade out and take care of the whole sword so if, if you want to make sure that there's no rust happening right over here inside the handle then you can do that and uh, if you want to see a video on that we actually do have a video we're going to link it down below and you can watch uh, how to take care of your high carbon steel sword because you should be taking care of them so here it is i have to be really careful when handling this because i do not want to cut my finger uh, but here it is, and you can, when you see these really close details, you can really see how sharp this sword is in comparison. I won't even bother trying to touch the sharp side of the blade because I know 
it's sharp. These are gonna be extremely, extremely sharp. When you are buying any sword from us, especially our battle ready swords, you have to keep in mind that these swords are not a toy. Nothing you see in this video is a toy. All of these are real swords that uh, can harm you if you use them improperly, uh, which is why I'm being so careful. I'm like not even moving because you don't wanna take any risks with this. These swords are really ideal for using on soft targets. I would recommend, especially if you aren't trained in how to use a katana or how to use a sword or in any martial arts, I would recommend using them on soft targets. You can use them to cut fruit, play some fruit ninja. I know uh, your friends will have a good time cutting watermelon and cutting mangoes and all that. Bamboo, you can use it on bamboo. Any sort of soft wood, if you want to get any mat and kind of roll it up and make a target like that, you can do that as well. That's what these swords are more ideal for. The other difference about our high carbon steel swords is the fitting. So the fittings on this sword are going to be more reinforced just because you want a stronger blade in general. So here are both of the, the black atrium blades. We have the carbon steel version right over here and the high carbon steel version right over here. So you can kind of get a better glimpse of what the difference is. Here you see there's no Makugi pegs. The blade right over here, uh, I can touch it, it's not gonna hurt me. This one I will not touch because it will hurt me. Here you have the Makugi pegs. You can see even the, um, the fittings are different. You got a stronger fitting right over here. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is still our high carbon steel swords, but we do have a collection of uh, higher end carbon steel swords. We have a ton of them. Uh, this is just one of them. I'm very excited because I haven't actually seen this one. So this will kind of be like an unboxing for for you guys as well. This is going to be in uh, uh, 1095, meaning it has 0.95% carbon content. It comes in this box, a uh, very nice box. This is what it looks like. And then when you open up the box, ooh, uh, fancy. The katana comes in a silk bag and it comes with a sword care kit as well. Our 1095 swords are going to be able to retain the sharpness of their blade extremely, extremely well. But if you are just starting out, then this is a very difficult sword for you to weld. This is not something uh, that if you are, oh, this is real pretty. <laughs> oh, this is so pretty. This is really, really pretty. I stopped mid-sentence for that. <laughs> Our 1095 swords are going to retain their sharpness very, very well, but uh, they are not a sword that a beginner should be using uh, if you are gonna be using this to hit any uh, targets or anything like that. The higher the carbon content, the more difficult the sword becomes to weld. So let me show you guys how this sword looks. And again, being very careful with this because this one especially is not a toy. It's gonna be, yeah. It's gonna be extremely, extremely sharp. And you can see that. I'm like nervous to touch it. Okay, we're good. Like it's like paper thin. Look at it, it's insane. One thing you should know about our 1095 swords is that all of our 1095 swords are clay tempered. Clay tempering is an art form as well as a science. Uh, and it's a notable technique of Japanese swordsmanship. So the details of the sword are like absolutely beautiful. You have the handle right here. Uh, you can see the Makugi pegs. The handle of the sword is very, very beautiful. You have the tsuba as well. The tsuba is made out of metal. And the tsuba is actually really cool because it uh, kind of has like this bamboo looking design. It's really, really pretty. There's uh, some nice details right over here on the handle as well. There's a lot of really nice details on this sword. You see the, the fittings over here, again, reinforced just because this sword does need to be stronger. And you can also get some great details of the blade. Uh, you can see that wave pattern right over there. That's called the hamon. And that's where clay tempering comes in. A hard sword is able to retain its sharpness very well and a flexible and soft sword is able to take a beating very well. So Japanese swordsmiths needed to come up with a way that they could get the best of both worlds and they did. And that's what clay tempering is. So basically what happens in the clay tempering process is that clay is applied to the spine of the sword to essentially insulate the sword so that it's more soft and flexible. The edge isn't gonna be covered in clay, uh, resulting in a harder edge that's able to retain its sharpness better. So uh, that's it for this video. That's the difference between our stainless steel, carbon steel, high carbon steel, and higher end uh, carbon steel swords. Just remember whenever you're purchasing a sword from us that these swords are not toys. So uh, make sure you are always being careful and make sure you're always handling them properly. If you want to purchase any of these swords, you can check fireandsteel.ca. The link to all these swords will be in the description down below. If you want a video on how to take care of your sword, uh, that will also be linked in the description down below. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys. Bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed what you just watched, please check out the links in the description down below. And like always, please consider subscribing and comment. Let us know what you think. We also have a lot of other videos. Please check them out. I know that you guys have mentioned a lot of times that you guys wanted to see some of these things demonstrated. So we have a lot of videos demonstrating how these actually do function. And we have a lot of videos of the behind the scenes at Fire and Steel. So thank you so much. See you guys next time.